Hey folks, Dave here. I uh, hope everybody's doing good today. I'm doing good. Uh, recently I done a video on uh, light burn fill versus offset fill and uh, showed the difference between the two and and explained how they might be useful in their own situation. Uh, so from that, I got a comment from Battleborn868 reference flood field, which I had heard of before, but I'd never used it. And uh, the comment, I'll just pop it up real quick. Uh, maybe. Uh, basically on how it can help you avoid uh, white space and it can produce a more even uh, engraving. Uh, but it is situational. So you'll have to determine for yourself, uh, and you can use that. We'll go through that, and you can determine which method is better uh, for your field. So after doing some research, it appears that it was created for larger uh, jobs and for if you have uh, other designs, that require special detail, and that's that's what it was developed for. But we're going to do a quick test, and anytime uh, you're selecting what function you're wanting to use, it's it's wise to test it. So we're just going to draw out a box, and then hit your selector tool, and we're in millimeters. We're just going to make this uh, 255 by 255. That's about 10, 10 inches square. Okay, and then we're going to go over to, we're going to select it and then go over to offset. Uh, and we will do an inward offset, corner, and I'm going to make this about 8 millimeters to give me a little more room to work with. And then we are going to group these together. And then we're going to put some shapes here just to test uh, and see which fill will, uh, which fill method will give us the best uh, time. Now for the actual result, uh, you'll have to go out and test it on some wood. And I've done, I've done uh, fill and offset fill. I've not done flood fill on an actual project, but, but hopefully I will soon. So uh, we're going to put some shapes. So go over here and click hexagon and hold down the shift key. Just draw out a small one. And then go up to window. Go down and make sure shape properties is selected. And then you can go over to your tabs on the cut and layer side here uh, and click shape properties and then you can change that shape. You can add different sides to it. So we're going to make, I'm trying to get to a three. Probably just type a three in and get me a triangle. So we're going to put a bunch of triangles in here and we'll just start at the bottom. We're just putting something in here to make the uh, make the laser do a lot of thinking so we can figure out which one of these is best. I'm hitting control Z because I made that too small. And that is probably okay. All right, so then we'll go over to array. And we will put over here on the Y side, we'll put about eight millimeter spacing, and then we're just gonna put a bunch of them in there. Hopefully it'll let us drag this around, yep. And then we're just gonna go all the way to the top. We're gonna make light burn do some thinking. And then click OK. All right, now, we're going to try to grab all these and just move them to the other side, get a copy. So when you, when you go in to grab them, if you pull from the right, you get a green line. 
and you don't want to touch anything except the shapes. And this shape is arbitrary. It's just it's just a shape. And then we're going to right click and we're going to group those together. And then we're going to right click and duplicate. And so we're going to pull them to the other side. It don't even matter if they're straight or not. We just want them over there and we want to make light burn do some thinking. Uh, so remember you can you can scroll in and out with your wheel. You can push down on it and move the uh, entire canvas around. Okay, so now we're going to select all this. We're going to group it together. We're going to go to Cuts and Layers, and we're going to leave it on Fill. And we're just going to hit the uh, Preview window, and it's on another screen, of course. Okay, so I've got the uh, Show Traversal down uh, selected and all of the red is where your laser has to travel and waste time uh, and if you look at the the estimated time down at the bottom it's one hour and 52 minutes you got time to eat dinner and take a nap while that's running so you don't want that you want to cut that time down so we're going to go look at so one hour 52 minutes uh, well, let me show how this plays out real quick. You can hit play, and it'll play through, and it's just going to go side to side, side to side, until it gets all the way to the top. So now we're going to change this to offset fill. And we've done this, we've done all this in the last video. We just didn't have shapes. So now we're going to check this time. And we've cut it down to 31 minutes. We cut an hour and 20 minutes off of it with offset, which is pretty sweet. Uh, and in most cases, you will probably find that offset field is your best option. Uh, but with these shapes being in here, uh, I think we'll probably see that flood field is our best option in this scenario. So let's play this through. And it, too, is going side to side, but it's going to do uh, different. It's going to jump. See, it's not going to go straight up. And if these shapes were not here, offset fill would just be a concentric type of pattern. It would just go around and around until it was finished. So let's finish this on out. And that's how she will look in the end. Okay, so now, we to get to Flood Fill, you have to go back to Fill. Then you can double-click on the, uh, the layer and go to the Settings Editor and find this Advanced tab right here. And then you can turn Flood Fill on. Don't forget that it is on when you're doing other things. So you need to go back and, and cut it off um, or you may get a result that you're not expecting, just not knowing that it's on. It's, it's a little hidden. Okay, click OK. Then we'll go back to our preview. And now we're down to 23 minutes. So we went from an hour and 52 minutes with fill uh, to... 31 minutes with offset fill, and now we're down to 23 minutes. Now, like I said, it won't be that drastic of a change for every project. Uh, so you have to look at each project individually, determine which one is best, and, and go with that. So I'm going to play this through, and it will do a different pattern. It's, Lightburn's trying to figure out the most efficient method for engraving this pattern that we've asked it to do. And it will do one side at a time as it goes through. It may jump back around and have to fill in some of these spots that you can see uh, where, the, where the designs are. But basically it's going to do one side, then the other, 
and then the next, and then it's going to jump back and fill in those little spots like that. Okay, so that is flood fill. And in this situation, uh, this would be the most efficient method. If you were doing something smaller, uh, a medium range item, this one's 10 inches, so if you're, if you're doing four, five, six inches, then offset fill, uh, at least in my experience, is going to be your best option. And then if you're doing uh, maybe letters or some really small objects, fill is fine. Uh, but it's worth it to check offset fill and then flood fill to see if you can save some time and then check your patterns after you're done and make sure it looks the way you want it to look. And if it don't, try something else. Well, that's it, folks. Uh, I appreciate you taking time to watch. I hope you learned something. Uh, I learned something from the commenter. And just as I told them, uh, one of the best parts of having a channel is as I'm learning uh, to use my laser, uh, while I'm sharing knowledge and I love to share knowledge, then I pick up a lot from the viewers and it just helps me to learn more. Uh, and I really appreciate it. So you folks take care and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.